can go through the syllabus and other things. Uh, they are written down in your website also, and here it is. This is the part which I'll be doing. Uh, bilinear transformations, discussion of some transformations, special transformations, uh, complex integration, we will do these three things. Let me get on to the subject matter as quickly as possible. Uh, so these are the things we learn. So let me, yeah. So I'll, uh, a lot of these things can be very easily learned using a, a software called GeoGebra. So I advise you to download this. Uh, very easy. Uh, try to type out Google and uh, in Google you type out GeoGebra. You can download any of the freely available software, GeoGebra Classic 6 or Classic 5, whatever you want. You just download, uh, install it on your computer. Once you open it, you will get this kind of screen. It's very useful. Uh, you can do a lot of your mathematics, what you are learning, you can do with this. Uh, for example, today I will try to show you uh, some of the uh, features of uh, GeoGebra, uh, which are relevant for us in learning our uh, complex transformation. As uh, we have been emphasizing in various courses, uh, one of the important things for engineers to understand is study of functions. I mean, have, for example, we have been learning uh, functions from real life to real life, real functions. In this course, we will be studying functions from complex numbers to complex numbers, plane of complex numbers to plane of complex numbers. Clearly, uh, functions from real life to real life is very simpler. In the sense, you must have, I mean, you have graphs, several uh, functions, which is from real line to real line, which means usual plane. So, where value of x is changing, y equal, for example, y equal to x squared. So you give various values for x and you get various values of y and you plot x comma y. It's a two-dimensional plot. Real case, that's how you have been doing for last whatever people uh, years, you know, things like class eight, nine, nine. Now what we have to do is we are trying to graph complex functions. That means I have functions from one complex plane to another complex plane. Previously understand we had functions from one real line to real line. Now we have to deal with functions from complex plane to complex plane. Clearly, I can't draw it because after all, we live in three-dimensional world and uh, each complex plane is three-dimensional object. So if I want to draw a complex function, that means function from complex number to complex number, I need a four-dimensional object. I can't do that. But that is where computers will help us. Uh, here in GeoGebra, I can, I mean, you play around a bit. I won't spend too much time on teaching how to use simple, you know, my 12 year old, 15 year old uh, children can operate this on their own. It's very easy. So here in the picture, uh, if you can see on the screen, you can see the desktop, right? They're able to see the desktop, right? Yeah. So you can see there is one plane here with grids and here is another complex. Both these are complex plane. How do I know it is complex? Because I am going to choose. You play around with this menu, then you will realize what I am doing. Right now, I want complex numbers. So I go to this point, this uh, whatever this is, this icon, and try to choose. I choose complex numbers. That means everything is converted to complex numbers. For example, if I click on this, I know this point is, as you can see, uh, x coordinate two, y coordinate three. So this point should have been named two comma three, but because I have chosen complex number. Gives me 2 plus 3. So basically, it's the usual real play, but it gives me complex representation in this play. This is one complex play. Now, you can see what all various things one can do. Of course, I can delete this. All these things you have to learn complex functions, how to draw. So, how to mark a point here and try to take its image here. That is what I am trying to show you how to do it. So, uh, this is what we are studying, mapping from plane to plane. So, this, this is, oops, sorry. This is, uh, 
this is one plane this is another plane so i will give a point here and i show you how to write a function which will take points here to points here that's the aim of this at least the first uh, part of the lecture uh, and these are the notations again notations on this complex plane we will use x plus i y x and y are two real numbers for example any complex number if i do here x equal to 2 and y equal to 3 2 plus 3 i is written as x equal to 2 and y equal to 3 so that's the standard notation and for this here i call the complex numbers here i can call them same as z because z i used for this play so it's like calling you know, my real function i call domain as x and co domain as y that means independent variable is x and dependent variable is y similarly here i call the variables here as z and variables here means the second play i will call it w so the functions are the way i write it is w equal to fz that is what i do w is f of z f is a function you must have seen many functions already in the first part of your complex numbers course uh, i will today we will see some more functions and notations are as i told z z equal to x plus i y and w equal to u plus i u that means this is u axis and this is v axis so u and v are real numbers uh and then so u and v are real functions and sometimes sometimes i may even want to use polar coordinates there this is really cartesian coordinate that means 2 plus 3 i means 2 this way and 3 this way uh in geogebra you can even move this to move this point that is the most powerful uh, uh advantage with uh, geogebra you see you can take complex number wherever you want and as you move your cursor it shows you what is the value of x and what is the value of y x is the first coordinate and y is the second coordinate you can see that you can move complex number wherever you want so what i want to do is now i will define a function and then i will tell you that how what is the image of these points so let's do that i i am more comfortable with points without uh, subscript so i will change these names i'll show you how to change names and things like that so i don't want this uh, i will mark a point here a so I, as you can see here a is given as 1 comma 4 its coordinate is 1 y coordinate is 4 but i want it in complex numbers so what i will do is i right click on a go to its settings and change its algebra basically instead of cartesian coordinates i want it to be a complex number as i told you it becomes 1 plus 4 you know what it becomes uh i will go to me very fast because i want you to see the pictures first and you later on you try out various uh, aspects of geogebra it's pretty interesting uh a is there and uh, okay i don't want this i can also draw lines this is very useful uh, facility of geogebra i can draw a line for example a and b i have drawn I have drawn a straight line joining A and B. But again, if I don't want these as complex numbers, sorry. so uh, what i want to do is i pick a point on this line for example so c is a point on this line i don't want to see a and b so i go back i want to write c i want it to be a complex number so how do i change that so you go to the settings and go to algebra and say instead of cartesian coordinates give me complex You see this point one plus two i, and as I told, you can move C all over. See all over. If you move, I told when I chose the object 
See, it was, I told it, it should be on the line. So when I move the cursor, the point will move on the line. Now, I want to modify, I want to play around with C. That means, for example, I want to write B is equal to C plus, say, 1. So 1 is a real number. So I want, this is the definition of B. So B is also being shown there. I don't want B to be shown in this plane. This plane. I want the B to be coming in W plane. So what do I do? Again, I change the settings a bit. And uh, I use complex number Okay, advanced. I want it to show on graphics 2 only and not on graphics 1. I don't want to change the color to make sure that we understand what we're talking about. Okay, so here what's happened here? B is defined as C plus 1. C is a complex number on this line. You see, as I move C, B is also moving. Because every time B, as I said, B is defined as C plus 1. So for whatever complex number C I do, you add 1 to it. So clearly, it is, you can see B is when C is. 1 comma 0, that is 1 plus 0 i, b is 2 plus 0 i. Similarly, you can see as c changes, b is changing. What I want to do here is, I want to type out more complicated function here and show you when I move this complex number, where all does the image move? How does the image move? This is what we want to understand in this part of the course. This is a very easy function. C, D is going to C plus 1. That means W is equal to Z plus 1. You can do this for, you know, I can show you many other functions also. For example, uh, you see P is equal to, it's another function, that means I'm defining one more function. E is equal to uh, C into C. So that is C square. Now you see, this is the definition of E, and as I told before, I want E to be seen only in uh, graphics two. That means in the W plane. I don't want to see. I don't want to see it in the Z plane. So when I move C, you see E is moving. You see that? That means when value of C is, you can see in this plot, you can see value of C is changing. One plus point four six I is what it is now. As I change that, you can see, as I move C, you can see that C, uh, real part of C is constant, whereas complex part is changing because C is moving on the straight line. And you can see for different C's, what happens to the value of E. E, I define it as C into C. In fact, it's so nice that you can even see the uh, trace, or I'll show you what does that mean. What this does is now, when I move C over this, it will show me where all E is moving. It's the trace of C. So you can see when I move C on a straight line parallel to Y axis, E is moving. Looks like it's a parabola. It should be correct. We will try to prove these kind of things in our course. This GeoGebra will not prove anything. This will only sort of help us understand, visualize the various uh, uh, functions. You see, as I'm moving C, E is changing. E is defined by C into C. So as C changes, obviously E will also change. You can write many different uh, functions. Uh, we will learn many functions in this, in this uh, module. So I what I want to show you is some of the very elementary transformations, which are translation, rotation, and magnification. These are not exactly as it is in your syllabus, but these are the elementary ones which you need to learn first. Uh, so let me show you translation. So this means, this is already we are seeing here, in this case. See, I don't want to see, I want to see D. Uh, D is basically translation of C by unit, by one. I can change this definition. For example, if I double click on this, uh, sorry, not double click, uh, I want, I want to change the definition of B. B, I will write it as say 2 plus i. That means B is now 
C plus two, C plus two plus I means I'm translating C by two plus I. So let us see how does that look. You see when B, uh, yeah, as C is very, you can see the value of B is C plus two plus I. So you can see the x coordinate has got added by two. Y coordinate added by two again. Sorry, x coordinate is added by two and y coordinate are added by one because I am adding two plus i. This is typically a translation. How to see it as a translation? You can do many things with this uh, uh, GeoGebra. I will show you few of these things. Here I will draw. You can learn these things very easily. But you just play around. First time when you see it on the screen, it may look complicated. But actually, if you play around, it's very easy. So you can see this is my complex number C. This is the image complex number D. Here I only shown it as a vector. So as I move this, sorry, sorry, sorry. as I move this point C, you can see D is also moving. How is it moving? By this definition, D is C plus two plus I. You can see C here. For example, when C is uh, one. Then 1 plus 2 plus i is obviously 3 plus i. So you can see c is got mapped to b. So whatever you see in blue color here is getting mapped to the red color there. D is the image of c because that's what I have defined. You, this is a typical translation. Everything is translated by 1 plus 2i. Of course, you can change the line itself. It doesn't have to be, uh, no, this. Uh, Original point will not be only on this line. In fact, you can change the line also. I will show you how to change line. And you learn these things on your own. See, I have changed the line itself. Now, if C moves on D, C moves on this line, you can see how the vector is, uh, the complex number is changing. If you want to see the whole, uh, in, uh, how all the point, trace of D, that means locus of D, you can check. You see, that's also a straight line. As C is moving on this straight line, B is moving on the other straight line. The idea of this course is to know an equation of this. Can I find the equation of this? That's the kind of things which we will, some of the things which we will study. So this is an example of translation. I can also talk of rotation. What I don't want, I will do it. At least I will make sure that I don't want to see it on the screen. Mm. Now, the next one I want to show you is uh, a rotation. So, for example, uh, under point G is equal to C into I. That means I am multiplying. This is the definition. This is the new definition. And I want G to be uh, again a complex number. I don't want Cartesian coordinates, it should be a complex number and I want to see this in, uh, I, I show this later, I want to see this in red color, I want to see this in graphic scheme. Yeah. So, when I move C, so what happens, I want to see this, G, uh, I want to see this. G is now you can see G. This means you see as I move C over this line, you can see how G is moving. What is G? G is C into I. So this is uh, you can see what if you want to understand this, you try to look for the trace of this. That means uh, show trace. So this will show me as C is moving, you can see the path of G. See, it's a line perpendicular to this. That we know from our elementary complex algebra. If I multiply some number by i, basically it rotates the number by 90 degrees anticlockwise about origin. You can see that see, when c is uh, at, let's take a easier point. So let me change a so that this line c is value of c is uh, Something, some integral point. Okay. So C, as it is moving, 
you can see g is moving perpendicular to this basically means if c is 2 you can see g is g c is value 2 value of g is whatever i mean you multiply c by i basically if you multiply c by i you get 0 0.02 minus 0 0.02 plus 2.03 i that's what is come here and that's what it shows here that's the point it is shown you can see show c here g is here so this is in our rotation this is b and this is z w is f of z where f is multiplication by i so this is example of uh, rotation i have shown you that is multiplying a complex number by i will give me rotation by 90 degrees i hope that is clear you can see as you change uh, line as you move c on this line you see that image line is perpendicular to this line which clearly shows that image of c is always 90 degrees anti-clockwise from c it's like you rotated this by 90 degrees about origin so if you move this here g image will be g so this is the rotation part uh, and uh, what are what are the thing, rotation magnification magnification is also very easy to see in this uh, so let us i don't know g i'll put uh, h is equal to very easy multiplication is 2 into c this means again i want to see this only in uh, second uh, graphics 2 not in graphics 1 so g is there as i move c you see actually i don't want to see g i want to see h in it. Maybe I don't want this, so I can delete this so that you can see everything at one place. The F one other thing for me, I don't want now anymore. So I mean what the X is here. So this what this says is let me make its color also different. So that you can see red color is always in the W plane and blue color is in Z plane, just to understand. So C as I move C, you see. It can be anywhere. C, as I move, see, see, for example, if it is, well, let us take an easy line. Okay. So, C, if it is 3, you can see H is 6, and this is going to multiply it by 2. So, this is the magnification. You can move C to some other point, and you will see that H will also have moved to some other point. As I move C, H is also moving. But H is moving at double the speed of C. That's because I multiply H by 2. So these are elementary examples of transformations from complex numbers to complex numbers. Basically, what I have done is I have taken one set of complex numbers here, another plane of complex numbers here, are uh, defining functions, various functions, and showing you the images of their images. So these are some of the elementary things. And <coughs> Now what else? Uh, what in particular what I am interested in are what is known as conformal mapping. I will read the board. Uh, what I need now more is conformal mapping, uh, conformal transformations. What that means, I will. Uh, so, conformal transformation. So, basically, what we have seen in the GeoGebra is the following. I had a complex plane here, graphics window 1, this is graphics window 2, Z was the variable here. I saw I just call it as C, C was the point in Z, and then I gave you various examples of functions. For example, the first I gave you was W of Z is equal to C plus well, some 2, C plus 2 plus I, which means for various values of Z, I have given you various values of W. 
and I have, well, just to illustrate, I have shown you C varying on a given straight line. It could be anywhere, it doesn't matter. C in general it could be anywhere on this straight. Anyway, so we want to study these kind of transformations, particularly what kind of transformations we are into now are what is known as conformal mapping. That means they preserve angles. What does that, what does that mean? So, for example, I have some line here. I have, okay, firstly I have a complex plane, which is Z is the variable here, and here W is F of Z. Some function. I gave you examples of uh, translation, rotation, magnitude. Now, under this map, this particular curve will become some curve. I don't know what, it could be anything. It depends. That means any point you take, you calculate F of Z. This is Z and this function is given. So I calculate its image. Similarly, as I go along this curve, I calculate its images everywhere. Now assume that at some point there are two curves which are intersecting each other. At this point, these two curves will make an angle. How do I define that angle? We take a tangent to this curve, we take a tangent to this curve, whatever is the angle between them, that's the angle between those two curves. Now take the corresponding image curves. That means this is the image. So if you want to the right notations, let me write down. This is curve C1, this is curve C2. This is W of C1. That means the first curve under W, what happens to it? And C2 is the second curve. This is the second curve. What happens to C2 or the W? It's image. This is W of C2. C1, C2 are two curves here. Now both of them will meet here. It must meet. It's not that always they have to meet, but we are going to consider those functions w where they will meet. If they meet here, these two c1 and c2 meet here. I'll write a slightly better diagram. This is c1, this is c2. Now they meet here. I want to know what is this angle. How do I define this angle? Draw a tangent to this curve and draw a tangent to the other curve. Now, whatever is the angle between these two tangents is called the angle between these two curves at that point. Now, what I want is, even here, if I draw a tangent, if I draw a tangent to these two curves, angle between them must be same as this. It's a very powerful, very stringent condition that I want angles to be preserved everywhere. That means, it's very strong, you see, any two curves you take, you take their images, this angle must be same as this angle. This curve, its image is this curve. This curve, image is this curve. Now, image of this point is obviously this point. Now, I want this angle to be same as this angle. Now, there is a small technical difficulty, uh, not difficulty, technical point, I need to make angle dual measure clockwise or angle clockwise. Just angle problem. Please fix to anti clockwise all the time. There are different words, right? No. And maybe this curve has become this curve, and this curve has become this curve. So when I say angle here, anti clockwise here, it may become this. Uh, there are such problems, but we will not deal with such problems in this course. In this course, we will be dealing only when the angles are preserved in the sense of either it is anti clockwise here, here also it must be anti clockwise. Such maps are called conformal maps. Clearly, the definition itself is pretty messy. Like on again, let me give you the definition. C1 and any other curve 2, try to see image of C. This is FC1 and this is FC2. Image of both the curves. Wherever they intersect, try to measure this angle. So, how do you measure angle between two curves? Basically, draw tangents 
at the intersection point of the both the curves and measure the angle. This angle must be equal to this angle, and in the same sense, that means if there is anticlockwise, here also is one anticlockwise. This must happen at every point for any two curves, any two curves which are in the same point and any two curves. Then I say such a mapping is called a conformal mapping. It confirms. What does it confirm? Confirm means conformal means it form is maintained. Form here means angle. So angles are preserved. So you can see the definition on your screen. Map a mapping which preserves angles. A mapping from complex number to complex numbers which preserves angles is called a conformal mapping. Obviously, to you know, if I give a map, I want to check whether it's confirmed or not. This is really very messy definition. All I'm going to take every point and any two curves there, find the angle between them and find the image and there find the angles and show that they are equal. It's a very messy kind of definition, but it's very useful. Uh, so we don't really do this computation of finding the angles. There's a very nice short sweet result whose proof I'm going to give you in this course. Uh, but it's very easy and available in most uh, standard textbooks. Uh, that result will tell me when a function is uh, conformal. That's the result which it relates to something which you already learned. You already learned when a function is analytic, when it is all its derivatives are there, whatever uh, you have learned your definition. That means not all its derivatives. At any point, you um, you, you already learned the definition of uh, analytic function, which means at a point I say a complex function is analytic if something, something, something happens. At least one of the standard conditions you know is Cauchy Riemann equations. If it satisfies that, and with some, you know, since this is an engineering course, I'm not going to do too much of uh, hair splitting. Uh, you just roughly know that all deriv derivatives at that point of all order exist. So that's all, that's whom I will call an analytic. Function. So the result, what it says is that analytic an analytic function so that means now I look at a z plane and a w plane. This is a function w equal to f of z. I know f of z is analytic. Analytic means at least for this course you can you know, assume that Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied. That means if you write f as u plus iv, means u and v are functions of x and y. So if I write u plus iv, then del u by del x must be equal to del v by del y, and then u by del v must be equal to minus del v by del x. These are Cauchy Riemann equations. Uh, you have been taught this in the first module, so I won't go into details. Whenever the function is analytic at a point, at this point, so analyticity obviously dependent on the point, it's a local property. That means you can talk of this function being analytic here or not. So a function is analytic here if these conditions are satisfied at that point. So this function is, if it is analytic and F dash z is not zero. This we know uh, if function is analytic, that's what I told you. All its derivatives are there, exist. Are there means they exist. There's no problem about talking about the derivatives of the analytic functions. If the first derivative f dash z is not zero, then the, the result says that f is a conformal map. This is a very useful. Easy result. So let me write it. Uh, it's there on your uh, screen. An analytic function f of z, w equal to f of z, is conformal if f dash z is not equal to zero. Conformal at z. At that point, it is, uh, the first derivative is not zero. That's what the result says. So, 
If I want to check somebody is conformal or not, all I need to do is, of course, I have to take analytic function and then I will check its first derivative. If it is not zero, I know already expressions for it. That is it. I mean, the menu by del x plus. See that in the first part. So I'll check if the analytic function is not zero at that point, it is confirmed. This is a standard result whose proof I'm not going to give in this class, uh, but it's very easy and one can do it. Uh, I will not spend time on that. I will be happy to introduce more different kinds of functions. That's what I want to do. Uh, and study their properties, which is what is important for engineering applications. Uh, you don't bother too much about uh, these kind of uh, results. It's proof of these kind of results. The results are important. The proofs are not what is important for this course. I think that's what your syllabus uh, is. Uh, so, this is conformal mapping. So, for us, conformal mapping is whenever uh, first derivative is not zero. Now, we want to study a particular type of conformal mapping. Okay. I want to study, uh, I have this function z2 w2. That means w of z. And I like this, it means it's a complex thing. So, w of z is az plus b divided by cz plus b, where a a complex and a b minus one this In the previous result. It's an These are available in any standard uh, textbooks. No. So, so, yeah, I want to give you some examples of uh, uh, this is what it says easy to verify that AD minus BC is not zero means 
dw by dz is not zero and hence the error map is small as well. This is what I just told you. Okay, that's okay. We'll go ahead. So uh, one of the values. This I already showed. For it now, okay, this I already showed, so I'll try to quickly do this. Take a equal to two, d equal to one, uh, d equal to c equal to zero. This will tell me w z is equal to two z plus zero divided by one. Divided by zero plus one, which is same as two z. This is what we saw in GeoGebra that it is multiplication by two. So, and also you can see a b minus b c is not equal to zero. So this is conformal transformation. So what we saw in the example in the first part, where magnification was there. Magnification means you want to draw the traditional picture, which uses that which becomes then two. The magnitude of this becomes two. This is what is. Multiplication by two means. So this is the conformal transformation. That means, you see, it says many things. You take any curve here, you see its image, something will be like this. You take another curve, its image will be something like this. This angle, wherever you say, this angle will be equal to this angle. 